Hey everyone, we're back at it again. Uh, this is a Code Wars. For those of you that don't know, I'm assuming if you clicked on the video that you're familiar, but if you're not, this is uh, a site where you can uh, do coding challenges, algorithm challenges, uh, like the kind that you might find on a typical job interview. So uh, I plan on doing a series, hopefully working my way up to uh, the more complicated uh, challenges. I really like this site because after you solve uh, a challenge, you get to see how other people did it, which is really, really useful and informative for seeing some really elegant solutions, maybe some features of the language that you didn't know about. This is going to be in JavaScript, but they have all different kinds of languages here. Uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So this is called Discover the Original Price. You can see it's uh, level 7. Uh, they go from 8 to 1, 1 being the hardest. So this is uh, towards the easier side of things. So I wanted to go ahead and start it out uh, a little bit lighter, though I think there are a couple parts of this that um, could be challenging. So the point is that uh, you have a, a set of products and you want to uh, write an algorithm that will tell you the original price. So in the example, if the item is currently selling for $75 and there's a 25% discount, uh, the original price would be $100. But we want to write this uh, algorithm that will tell us uh, whatever the case is for whatever inputs we give it, uh, those being discounted price and sale percentage. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip over here to... Uh, this site, Autodraw, just found it, uh, Googled for it, because this actually requires a little bit of math. So uh, I remember doing this in Algebra 1 in high school. So essentially, um, the way I conceive of it is that um, in our previous example, uh, you know, 75% of, so if we say 75%, um, out of 100%, aka 1, is the same thing as $75, which we already know, and we want um, to find out the original price. So uh, just comparing ratios here, so 75% to 100% is the same as $75 to what? We already know the answer to that is 100, but uh, you cross multiply, so then you have um, down here point. 75 times x is equal to 75, having cross-multiplied here, and then 75 times 1, of course, is 75. We divide by um, 0.75, which cancels out here, and then 75 divided by 0.75 is... 100. So then x is equal to 100. So um, with that in mind, going back to our, our problem, we know essentially what we have to do to get uh, the right answer is divide sale price by um, the uh, 1 minus sale percentage, basically, right? So going back here, uh, we have all the building blocks we need to get started. So, uh, you know, this seems like it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to return, um, I said, discounted price divided by, and then we wanted one minus sale percentage, but that's just a number. Uh, we see here we're just passing in. Uh, Ints, right? Integers, whole round numbers, uh, no floats, uh, no decimals, anything like that. So we need to go ahead and account for that. Sale percentage, and then we're going to divide that by 100. So that's going to give us the percentage uh, order of operations. Either way, it's going to be fine. Uh, so no need to worry about that for now. Um, no need to think too hard about order of operations. That always trips me up a little bit, and I tend to put too many parentheses in there, but uh, that's fine for now. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, this should give us the right answer, right? But we see that uh, 
we've got to, going back to the instructions, we've got to return two decimal places. So, um, you know, if it's a nice round number, we're fine. But if it uh, turns out to be a float, then we're getting all these numbers, right? Out to, I think, 10 decimal places. So there's a few ways we could do that. Uh, the first way, uh, or there's a few ways we could solve for it. I think the first thing we need to do is uh, use this method called too fixed. And it's a great method. Uh, I like MDN for my documentation. I think it's the most solid. So too fixed, you basically just uh, give it the uh, number of decimals that you want. So between 0 and 20. So let's go ahead and give it that and see what happens. Will it work? Will it not? This is part of the process, just seeing what works, not necessarily trying to get it right on the first attempt all the time. So uh, back to this. What am I seeing here? So that's not quite what I was expecting. I was expecting some, hmm. So let's consider this. Ah, okay, yes, this is what I was expecting. So we're getting strings, and we're getting all kinds of decimal places here. Uh, we're getting it even when it's a nice clean round number, like 100. So uh, we need to go ahead and account for that. So uh, one thing we could do is kind of break this out. I think kind of doing too much on one line can, can be confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and call this original price instead of getting caught up with all um, these parentheses and everything so we're going to go ahead and see what that looks like okay so back to where we were right and then if we do too fixed as we were doing it Okay, so this is what I'm expecting. Um, um, there's a few ways to turn a string back into a number. Uh, you can just use the uh, capital number here, like this, and that should work, right? So uh, one reason being, if you just open up your uh, console, and we say number, and... 100.00, which is one of the things we are getting now. You see it go ahead and, and gives you a nice clean number back with no decimal places, but if you do have a decimal place, it gives you the decimal place back. So that already solves for us one issue we're having, which is that uh, you know when it's a clean number, we want it uh, just to be uh, an integer, and then when there's decimals, we want two decimal places. So this uh, would allow for us to solve for both of those. So let's go ahead and attempt. And we see we get our test passing. Now, um, as I said, when you submit final, which I feel pretty okay with that for now, you get to see all of the uh, awesome ways that other people solved it. So uh, we more or less did this. Uh, this plus sign was really interesting, I thought. That's a shorthand for doing the... Um, number function that we just did and then uh, of course there's a few other ways of doing it but uh, anyway hope this is helpful uh, hope this is motivating to continue to solve these puzzles I, I find that they're very helpful and I'll see you in the next one